Hi guys, good morning, how are you? I hope you're fine. Today we're going to continue with section 2 of chapter 8, which is how soil forms. So, it's in your books on page 248. If you have your book, please open it so you can um, see the, the pages and continue like um, the literature of the book. Um, so first we have that soil is the loose weather material in which plants grow. What is weather? It's not related to weather as climate, but it's related to weathering and erosion. Weathering is the process by which rocks are broken down into smaller pieces by rain, by animals, by roots, by big trees, by animals kind of like rabbits, um, rats, or all of those animals who live underground that cause erosion and they destroy the rocks, that is how soil is formed. So those animals and, and the rain and all of those factors is really necessary so we can have soil. And why is soil necessary? Because if we don't have soil, we don't have plants. And without plants, we don't have oxygen. And without oxygen, we don't have life. So that's why soil is so important and that's why it's on your book on this section. So soil is a mixture of rocks and minerals, all right? We already talked about this too because um, they get eroded and they're on the soil. They, they, from a rock, they make teeny pieces. It's also formed by organic material. What is organic material? Everything that's living. Animals, plants, leaves, etc. But not, but not only alive. Remember that animals die. And when animals die, they are absorbed by the soil and they produce... Um, they give the nutrients to the soil, so the soil gets nourished. Soil also has water content and air. The water content of, of the soil is going to depend on the size of its particles. The smaller the size is, the faster they get dry. I don't know if it's ever happened to you that you go and see your plants, you have a plant on a pot, and you pour water, and maybe when you go out like an hour or two hours uh, after and you see it, you're going to see dry. It's maybe because you have too, tiny, uh, too much tiny particles and that doesn't allow the water to conserve it. Not that your plant's not going to absorb it because the plants absorb it to the root, but the water evaporates faster when it's smaller size. Uh, so it's classified by size, so we have the tiniest one of all. It kind of looks like a period of, of a sentence on your book. It's called clay. Then we have a slit. It's a little bit bigger. Sand, that if you get sand in your hands, you're gonna feel the different uh, textures. And sand is a little bit rough because it's a little bit uh, bigger. And finally, we have a gravel, which is a gravin, you know, those tiny rocks that you use in parking spots and in places. Clay is really soft. Alright, it's the one that if, if you go um, someplace and, and they give you something to put on your face, to make a scrub or something, they use clay, something really soft for your skin. Then sand, if you rub it against your skin, it's really rough, so it's going to hurt you. And well, gravel, we're not going to do that because it's pieces of rocks, right? But how does a rock become all this? Soil forms as rock is broken down into smaller pieces, but how? If you remember the video of weathering and erosion, and if you saw it complete, you saw the coast, the coast of, of a beach and how it was changing because of um, the ocean movement, because of rain and etc. all right? This is the exact same thing, just because sometimes we don't see this because it's happening underground. But as water flows and goes by, it causes erosions on the rocks, or if you've ever grabbed a big rock and you throw it, and it breaks, you're causing erosion. So those changes in rocks are gonna cause sand eventually. But how again? Look at your books on page 250. On page 250, you have a process of soil formation and you have three charts on the bottom part. On the first one, you have a bedrock that's really big on the bottom part and you have big chunks of rocks. This is how it looked at the very first beginning. But as rain comes, as river streams, as animals start uh, eroding, as tiny plants begin to grow and roots start eroding the plants, eventually 
the rock pieces or uh, the rock, sorry, the big rock is gonna go into chunks and it's gonna form small rocks. Once it has small rocks, it gives the opportunity to tiny plants to start growing. And those roots of those plants is gonna cause even more erosion and it's gonna call animals attention and they're all gonna come here. Finally, since we have so many plants and so many erosion, plants are able to grow very nice, kind of like in a garden. Uh, animals will begin to live in here. And the big rock that we had at the very first beginning is now small chunks of rocks. So that is how weathering and erosion form the process of soil. All right, that is how soil is formed. So soil, uh, we have the top soil that is very dark uh, brown, that is the one that you have on your flowering pots. Eh, a tierra unada, they call it, all right? That's black and it's filled with tiny leaves. That is called the topsoil. Then we have the subsoil, that is the horizon bee that has um, also soil, and but it has frogs. And finally, we have a layer of rock here below. So that is how soil is formed. Soil composition is changed. It's not always going to be the same. And it's changed by plants, by animals, by water, water and weather. Here it's weather, all right, climbing. Because it's not the same that we're going to have a plant in a humid area like, like our tropical area as if we had it on the desert, all right? Because in the desert it's going to dry and it's, it's just going to die. So soil composition changes. Uh, by plants, the more plants we have, the better the soil is going to be. Because the plants absorb the nutrients, yes. But as the plants or as the leaves of those plants die, they fall into the soil and the soil gets back the nutrients. Animals are very important to have in soil because animals also produce organic material or their waste is in which uh, the soil grabs it and it produces nutrients. The content of water, as I explained you, it's going to vary it according to the size of, sand, of soil that you have on your pots or in your garden. All right, some of them are going to be more watery retaining and some of others are going to lose water really fast. What happens when organisms live in soil? When organisms live in soil, like you have on page um, 252 on your books, when you have organisms living in soil, you're gonna form something that's called humus. Humus is the, the soil that we buy in, in the gardens, in the gardening places, eh, as tierra bona. Why? Because it has the leaves, it has the eh, plants, that an, eh, the insects mostly, not, not animals, you're not gonna find a big animal on, on the soil, but it has already had um, the insects and decayed material. And it has a lot of nutrients. Why? Because all of those um, dead and decayed matter, organic matter, are absorbed by the soil. And once you put it to your flowering plant, you're going to produce a, a lot of nutrients and the plant's going to grow faster. And this is the objective with you making humus as a class word. Uh, you can make it with peels of carrot or banana peels or tomato peels, eggshells, etc., etc., right? You just grab a tiny amount and you crush them with something with a cup or you just cut them with, with a knife or something and then you put it to your plant to a, to a flowering pot you apply it to it and you put water and then you're going to see the results as this uh, organic material starts rottening they're going to produce uh, a lot of nutrients in the soil and your plant's going to grow very pretty and very nice so humus is the best for your garden, all right? It's the one who's gonna give your garden that greenish look and it's gonna look real pretty. So this is the topic for today. I hope you guys understand, it's really easy. Soil formation, weathering, and erosion. And it's really simple and it's really good for your life. And now that we have so many time for spare, you can grow your own, own tomatoes or your own um, bell peppers like we did last year. And this time you're gonna have time to take care of them. Uh, so I hope this works and I hope you, you start a garden because uh, we need it in this days. Alright, have a nice day guys.